President Mohamed Buhari, along with 22 governors of the APC controlled state, plus some of the presidential aspirants, including the former Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, have flagged the party's presidential campaign in Rowang Pound Stadium, Jos, the Plateau State Capital. APC National Chairman Abdullahi Adamuwal congratulating Tinubu and his running mate and Takashim Shitima informed party members at the stadium that with the flag off of the APC has now begun formally and campaigns across the country to tell Nigerians what the party intends to do if elected into power again. Chairman of the Progressive Government's firm, Matiko Bagudu, was forced to stop his speech halfway because of the fracas involving APC members as security personnel who were trying to control the crowd resorted to beating them with Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Ahmed Wasi, intervening at the different intervals, pleading with their grieved supporters. Presidential candidate of the party, Paul Ahmed Tinubu, whose speech was intermittently laced with some dance moves during which the crowd was firstly chaired, began his speech laced with chants of hope saying that renewed hope is back. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has described the prayer by the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Ashaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu's prayer as prophetic. The National Publicity Secretary, Honorable Degon Lugmaga, in a statement on Tuesday, stated that the APC candidate is ineligible to contest the 2023 election. Tinubu had on Tuesday, during the flag off of the APC presidential rally in Jos, said, God bless PDP, the P PDAPC. The PDP scribe said the statement by Tinubu further confirms its innermost conviction their party represents hope and aspiration of the majority of Nigerians. A lot to chat about, Dr. Bati. Political season. Okay, yesterday the um, All Progressives Congress launched its campaign at the uh, Palm Township Stadium in Jos, in Plateau State. First, the choice of venue. I think that is instructive. Uh, Plateau State is the state of the chairman of the, uh, of the, uh, the director general of the campaign, Governor Simon Lalong. Uh, Plateau State. And uh, it must also be noted that Plateau State is a predominantly uh, Christian state. Simon Lalong, who is leading the uh, 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 campaign of the APC, is also a Christian uh, governor. And then, third, uh, that location is in the middle belt. I think for the APC, that's strategic to the extent that it will seem to indicate part of that attempt uh, by the APC to show that the Muslim-Muslim ticket that they run uh, is not essentially uh, a threat uh, to anybody. So in terms of optics, that was that. Second, it was a very well-attended uh, event. In fact, uh, one newspaper this morning was reporting that uh, uh, the uh, aerodrome and the airport in Jaws witnessed 95 aircraft arrivals. That, in fact, the airport and the aerodrome in Jos were both so fully packed with helicopters and private and charter jets uh, that some aircraft had to be directed to go and park in Abuja uh, for, uh, for, them to, uh, for the passengers to then make the 30 uh, minutes journey by road uh, to Abuja or whatever you know, distance that was. But that was the extent of the representation. Uh, major chieftains of the party were there. Uh, Governors were there, former ministers were there, but some people were conspicuously absent. The vice president was absent. Well, the vice president uh, was uh, busy in Lagos attending the United Nations WTO uh, tourism event. Uh, so that's understandable. He had an assignment, and in any case, it will have been odd for the president and the vice president to be at the same venue at the same time uh, from a security perspective. You know, the security people, they usually try to avoid that, particularly if it is outside, it's an outside location where there are security uh, considerations. Um, Minister Fashola was also noted to have been absent, but he had an assignment, we were told, and then Boss Mustafa, uh, who had opposed the Muslim-Muslim ticket, 
uh, was also uh, absent. But significantly, uh, the party was well uh, represented. Now, what is the third point? The third point had to do with the uh, candidate himself, uh, you know, making the usual statements about what he intends to do. Uh, he wants to tackle uh, the challenge of insecurity. He wants to give renewed hope where he has a manifesto. The substance of what he said uh, was largely taken from his uh, uh, manifesto. So he used the opportunity uh, to reiterate and to say how you know, he thinks he's, uh, uh, he's the better candidate uh, than those who are looking towards the past, whereas he wants to take Nigeria forward uh, to the future. We're standard promises, but the test of the, of the, uh, the, test of, uh, of the pudding is in the eating. And that is why on this program, we've always called for specific details rather than rhetorical uh, statements that tend to come from these presidential candidates. What are those concrete things that you want to do? In terms of concreteness, apart from saying you will deal with insecurity, you will give hope, well, you know, most of it, of that script is just uh, uh, political rhetoric. The president, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, also spoke at the event. President Buhari is the chairman of the campaign, and of course, um, his presence there is instructive because, in many ways, the next election is likely to be a referendum on the uh, performance of the All Progressives Congress in the last eight years. And President Mohamed Ubuari is the chairman of the campaign. And yesterday, he openly endorsed Ashwa Jubola Ahmed Tinumbu as the right man for the job. Uh, he said he's the right person at this time. Okay, this is his own party. We don't expect him uh, to go and uh, oppose a campaign that he's leading. However, he said that his administration is committed to ensuring you know, the integrity of the electoral process, whatever the outcome may be. And he said this in London uh, after his visit to King Charles III. He has repeated it again. He has said so again in other fora, most recently also in Oweri. Uh, when he attended the senior police officers uh, conference. I think that's the important takeaway, uh, you know, uh, in terms of message, because indeed, President Muhammad Buhari's place in history will be determined, will be affected substantially by how exactly he handles this transition that Nigeria faces in uh, February, March next year. The seventh major election since the transition to civilian rule in 1999. So it's up to him to deliver on his promise to ensure electoral integrity. After all, in 2015, we saw another administration that said, look, it's better to respect the will of the people. And we hope that the APC will be committed to that again uh, this time around. So they've launched their campaign in the All Progressives uh, Congress. We're likely to see more uh, activities. However, two things, two major, well, three actually, you know, uh, came out as part of that uh, event that people have been talking about on social media. First was the gaffe by uh, Ashwa Jubala Metinubu, to which the uh, spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party uh, was reacting. When Ashwa Jubala Metinubu said, God bless PD, and he quickly corrected himself and uh, said uh, APC. Well, you know, well, some people will say, these gaffes are one too many. The other, last year, he said he was going to recruit 50 million youths to join the Nigerian army. That was later corrected to say, oh, that was an error. He meant 50,000 uh, youths to join the Nigerian army. In uh, October, at the Cardinal Investment uh, Summit, Card Invest, he, he described uh, Governor Nasir Rufai, who, by the way, was at this just event, as uh, somebody who had turned the rotting situation into a bad one, whereas that was clearly uh, not what he meant. And then yesterday, he committed another gaffe, uh, you know, uh, trying to mention uh, uh, PDP. Well, I don't know which PDP he's talking about. Maybe the weekend wing of the PDP, Wike Makinde, Uguanye, Ipeazo. You know, maybe those are the ones on his mind. Who knows? Or maybe this is just uh, a Freudian slip, a slip of the tongue, as I guess his uh, communications people will come and uh, explain. Well, he's an elderly man, so some people may explain it away. But my advice to his strategist is that they should teach him to stay with the script. Because he makes these gaffes, you know, he mixes up the, uh, uh, the 
the register, the linguistic register, uh, sometimes it lapses into uh, very obscure, vague, uh, uh, you know, proverbs and metaphors, you know, that confuse rather than enlighten people. But, you know, he can stay with the script. If he stays with the script, that would be just fine. The second incident, of course, was uh, the death of uh, Sabu Olawale, uh, who, uh, you know, was said to have collapsed and then he died uh, before he was rushed to the hospital. Member of the uh, Lagos State House of Assembly, two-time, uh, you know, uh, uh, member of the Lagos State House of Assembly, chairman of the Committee on Local Governments, he was 60. The man popularly known as Omitiji, we commiserate with members of his family. And again, this should draw our attention to the need to provide at these rallies, first aid, emergency help, and all of that. And also, you know, for every one of us uh, to pay attention to what is known as the sudden death syndrome. It's a major problem. People may have high blood pressure, they don't know, you know, and we've had so many cases of the sudden death syndrome. Uh, in more times, in more recent times. And, you know, the thing, of course, is for people to just take care. Health comes first, whatever the political considerations may be. The third point was that at that event, which also the PDP has made heavy capital out of, is that there were some people who were throwing slippers, who were throwing uh, sachet water and all of that. Well, uh, the PDP, uh, some PDP persons have said, oh, this is evidence that... Uh, you know, the electorate are rejecting the APC. Well, I don't know about that. You know, when it is a PDP rally, if anybody throws anything, uh, the PDP will say, oh, these are APC elements. But in this particular case, they, they are not talking ironically about uh, PDP elements throwing, uh, you know, uh, missiles, uh, missiles, you know, at that event. Uh, they are saying, oh, it's evidence of uh, rejection. Well. Any political rally that you have, there will be persons who will be unruly, out of sheer enthusiasm. After all, are, the APC candidate himself got so enthusiastic, he didn't even remember the name of his own party. He was mentioned in the other party. But all told, you know, this is political season. We hope that people will focus on the issues. And I hope also that they will take the admonition of INEC, because Professor Yakub Mahmoud also spoke yesterday that INEC is focused INEC is prepared, and INEC is committed to delivering a credible electoral process. I mean, a lot has to be said about uh, the PD, I mean, the APC rally, and that was no pun intended, really. Uh, the APC rally uh, yesterday in Joss. Yeah, struck all the right notes, got all the people there, <coughs> and um, oh, uh, a lot of people attended, over 20 uh, governors, 22 governors are here, you can't take this away from Balati Nobu. He's a good politician. He knows his grassroots strategy. He's been doing this for over 30 years. He will bring out a crowd, right? He will pull together a show. And that's what he did yesterday. But the quibbles I'm hearing that how come we have so much private jets in this country where a lot of people are suffering and all of that. And some people were saying, okay, why are state officials, governors and the likes, flying private jets at the expense of suffering people? That some of these governors, too, will also claim that oh, it's difficult for them to pay salaries in their states and all of that. That's some of the feedback I'm getting from people. But good on him. Also, he tried so hard to be able to placate President Muhammad Buhari with his speech yesterday that he will live up the legacy. But a lot of people are quick to ask, so what legacy? Is it going to continue from President Obama to Buhari? As of this morning, inflation is 21.07%. Point nine. Point nine percent. Okay, 0.09%. As of this morning, petrol prices are on the increase because we're already seeing problems with landing costs and forex problems. As of this morning, it's harder for a Nigerian to be able to get a meal. Some people are doing 001. The CBN target for inflation is supposed to be 9%. We've surpassed that. The economic index is at an all-time low. Although the people in this government will say, oh, it's happening all over the world. Look at what's happening in Ghana. But some people also argue that this is our country and we have not made better economic decisions. So a lot of people are at sea as because what legacies? Oh, infrastructure. Okay, yes. Lagos about an express, uh, uh, Lagos about a rail line. 
Uh, Kaduna Rail Line, although some people in the PDP will argue that that has started long ago, but okay, President Buhari finished it, second Niger Bridge and all of that. But people will say, what's the outlook on the lives of people? People will say, okay, Kaduna Rail Line, did they put in the security architecture that was needed after building up the rail line? That's why people were kidnapped there. So there are many back and forth as regards even the legacy of President Buhari. But one thing he did, as a smart politician he is, and because we all know the back and forth that has happened between them, especially with his Emiloko speech, he's tried to placate President Muhammad Buhari. And it was a good showing with the president being there. But also in his messaging, given all the hope messaging and all of that, it is incumbent on candidates to stop this abuse of their political adversary. Calling people termites, calling people all sorts of names. But some people on the flip side will argue that all these politicians are the same anyway. And that's why probably the presidential candidate said, God bless APD, APC. Because he knows they are the same. Because even look at the man that he's running against. Look at the presidential candidate of the PDP. At some point, they were all in the same political party. This same Bolati Nubu did give a tiku, like he said, the presidential ticket of the ACF then. And they all formed the APC. When, you know, Atiku Abaka was disgruntled with Jonathan's, you know, trying to run the second term. And because of that, he took his own faction of the PDP. And they joined forces into what morphed into the APC. And that's why when Atiku Abaka said, oh, it was... Buhari and Tinubu that formed the APC. A lot of people say he was trying to be clever by half. So maybe he knows they are all the same. That's why that happened. But politicians should show example to their followers. They should not call each other names. They should stay on their message and advance their ideas. The rowdiness too was talked about. Some people made some speculations. But whatever it is, we need a better system of reining people in. It is a bad optics for the deputy speaker to be saying security forces should stop beating citizens because no matter what was happening, those people too were citizens. And it's bad optics for the rally. Then the sad occurrence of what happened with the Lagos lawmaker who prayed for the repose of his soul and we just pray his family is comforted. Then the heavy attendance also by those in the culture and entertainment and arts. A lot of, you know, Yoruba, Nollywood actors were there. They took turns. You know, I could see Ogogo there. I could see a lot of other people there. And also actors across board. Also, there was a representation by the disability community, uh, people living with disability community that were there yesterday, you know, to make representation there and all of that. But... Good note, good starting, good footing for him. The question is, how is he going to consolidate? And how are they going to keep these gaps in check? And how are they going to ensure that it's only on their message they stay on, not abusing other people? And probably, we'd like to get a reaction. You know, I'm sure the APC machinery will be writing his reaction as regards the, I don't want to call it fraudulent sleep, probably call it a metaphor or whatever it is. The prayer, the PDP has also reacted to it. The campaign season has started. But most importantly, let us stay on the message. Because all of this rhetoric is just poetry. And I always quote Mario Cuomo that we campaign in poetry, but we govern in prose. I would have thought the candidates will say, this is how I'm going to reduce the inflation numbers. This is what I'm going to do as regards inflation and give us details how to do it. And those are the important conversations we shall have. Kudos to them. Let the campaigns begin. It's all started already anyway. The Labour Party and its presidential candidate, Peter Obi, have replied to Nambra State Governor Charles Soludova's comments that, the, that Obi will not win the presidential election and the leaders of the Southeast geopolitical zone need to rethink their political strategy for 2023 elections. Both men responded at different forums on Soludo's statement, which has generated reactions across the country. A rice correspondent, Suji Olani Pekun, compiled this report. It is an opinion expressed by Anambra State Governor Charles Soludo on the ambition of Peter Obi to be Nigeria's next president in 2023. Soludo says he's sure that the Labour Party presidential candidates cannot win the election due to lack of geopolitical spread and structure. 
Saludo also says he will not succumb to bullying by supporters of Peter Obi, popularly known as Obedient, over Obi's performance as Anambra governor. Saludo says Obi was inadvertently making the pathway to victory much easier for the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, and at the same time, toying with the destinies of millions of Ndibo. But the national chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Abure, while responding to Saludo's comments, declared it a personal and minority view with no weight or election consequences on Obi's journey to Aso Rock. The comment is born out of selfishness, Comment is born out of uh, self-centeredness, uh, is born out of um, desperation, uh, is born out of uh, envy and jealousy. Uh, I mean, for uh, somebody who was a CBN governor, who should know the importance of investment, which has been acclaimed by other governors to be one of the best that has been done in Anambra State. I mean, for such a man to demean such an investment will tell you that he's acting from a selfish point of view. Uh, I see Soludo's comment as uh, distraction, and I urge the people of Anambra State to treat it with a pinch of salt, uh, to discontinence it, disregard it. Also responding to the matter, during a meeting of the Lagos Business School alumni in Lagos, Peter Obi downplayed Soludo's opinion on his ambition and also said governance is a continuous process that no one can finish the job of governance in two terms. I needed to explain it not because I'm defending comment by my brother. My brother is the brother. I remember my brother. We're very close. I remain prayerful for him. For other things which I didn't succeed, God has given him opportunity to do it and succeed. For me... For me, yes. So if there's anything pending, governance is, governance you don't finish. People are still gov in government in America. So you stop where you stop, other people will continue from there. I don't look back, he's the governor of my state. I'll always, he's my senior brother. He's even more intelligent because he's a professor, I'm a trader, so he knows more. So he'll be able to do things better than I'm doing it. You know, I've done my little own as a trader. Now the professor is there. He will do his own as a professor. The schools that didn't roof, he will roof them. That's how government goes. If you have tried a product first year, second year, third year, and you are not getting maximum benefit from the product, it is fair and it is a reasonable thing to do, to throw away that product and get another product. Today, we've tried PDP for more than 16 years. Uh, you've seen the, the maladministration where it has landed us. You have seen the APC, and you've tried them, and you have seen where we are. So every reasonable person at this point should be able to change those products and get a new one. And the new product as of today is Labour Party. The Labour Party also says it will not be intimidated by Governor Saludo's comment, and that it will continue to push for a better Nigeria by offering voters a credible alternative. All right, uh, Dr. Vati. <laughs> okay, I mean, the reactions are to be expected. The only re there are other reactions too that are not included in that. Uh, one of it will be uh, the reaction of the Director General of uh, the uh, campaign. Uh, that's uh, from Dr. Donyo Kupe, uh, who has uh, accused uh, uh, Governor Soludo of political delusion and of indulging in absolute fallacy. And uh, he pointed out that, contrary to what Soludo has said, that uh, uh, the candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, uh, will win 25% in all the states uh, in the southeast, and in fact win overwhelmingly, and that he, he stands to become uh, the next president. But we've seen the reaction of the uh, chairman of the party, uh, Julius Abure, and we've also seen the uh, humorous, you know, varied humility, uh, you know, by uh, Mr. Peter Obi at the Lagos Business uh, uh, School Council uh, event, where he said, well, you are a professor, I'm a trader. Okay, you are there now, you are more intelligent. Do your own. After all, government is uh, continuous, you know. But of course, don't take that on the surface. That is a very clever way of trying to tell uh, Soludo to focus on the assignment that the people of Anambra have given him. 
after all, he now has an opportunity. And he made a point about the international BOEs, uh, which was the investment that he said he was referring to. And he said the international bureau's investment is still there. What he did as governor was to make sure that the people of Anambra State would get 10% of every investment and that the international bureau's in which he invested state resources is part of an international conglomerate uh, which has not disappeared. And in any case, when you make investments, some will do well, some will not do well. After all, it didn't go away with the investment. It belongs to the people of Anambra State. However, the other reaction in all of this that I find very curious is the uh, uh, reaction of a group called uh, Oanese worldwide. Not Oanese Indigo. Oanese Indigo is the one led by uh, Professor George Ubioso, but there's also a group called Oanese uh, worldwide. And what is the uh, contribution of Oanese uh, worldwide in this matter? It is to say that, uh, oh, the group has now reported uh, Charles Soludo uh, to two deities in Ebo land, uh, Chocolese in uh, Mbise and uh, Ubine Mukbabe in uh, Arochuku. Uh, look, some of these people, they just behave, they sound like area boys. We are talking every day here about issues, about debates, about ideas. Some characters, you know, for emotional reasons, are talking about Chukulese in Nimbise and, uh, and uh, Ubine Ukwabi in Aruchuku. I mean, look, some of these people, if they have nothing to say, let them shut up. If they want to contribute to, you know, political discourse, let them make the effort, but not to, you know, say ridiculous things in the 21st century when people are talking about ideas, they are debating issues. You can support whatever candidate, but please don't bring the deities into it. Let the deities stay in their shrines, either in NBC or on Arushuku. But I think Mr. Peter will be has taken the higher ground, you know, to try to douse tension by taking a humorous approach to it and just stating matter of factly, you know, uh, that government is continuous. Do your own. I've done my own. I've moved on. I'm looking to the future. I think that's really very clever thing to say. Like you said, Dr. Badi, I think it's very clever of Peter Ovi because what was the bone of contention in the first place? And that's why I keep saying, I mean, whoever advised Governor Soludo to write that op-ed didn't advise him well. What's the bone of contention? That some investments were worth nothing. If you were to even write a rejoinder based on the reactions you got from that, you will have just to look at these are the investments and these are their worth today. I mean, from beyond renewable doubt, the one you went on the narrative of, I told him to join APGA, I didn't join APGA, don't scuttle the chances, a uh, fleeting frenzy and all of that. No, it wasn't needed. And it was, you know, very accurate with his reaction by saying, government is a continuum. Uh, the professor should just, you know, face what he ought to do. That I am a trader. Uh, I might not know as much as the professor, but he should go ahead. And I pray for him every day. And I think after this, Governor Soludo should not be writing the part two of the rejoinder. I think let all of this end. We should stop focusing on back and forth sentiments. What we should focus on should be the issues affecting people. Anambra people have a lot of problems. They're deviled by insecurity. They need infrastructure. They need a lot of things. Like I said before, he has started some of the work. I'm talking about Governor Soluto. He should only consolidate and continue on them. Not spending the hard end time he got from the Anambra people through his mandate to write an over 23 paragraph and close to 4,000 word op-ed on a particular issue. No, he should focus on the work. And that's the most important thing. I think it is time for us in this country to tell our politicians to stay on issues. And it was a good one yesterday at the Lagos Business School. Uh, Peter Abu was not only there, I think there was also a ticket worker there where they expose their ideas. We want more platforms like this. And please, also candidates should please present themselves for debates so that we can ask them how they're going to go about their plans. It is really very important. And when people say, oh, debates are not necessary, I wonder how do you exchange ideas? How do you even learn more? You get to learn from each other in debates. And it's not totally to witch hunt anybody. No, we just want the vibrancy of ideas. And that's what debates are all about. We should have a society that is welcoming to debate, that can stay on the issues. And we want more engagement. 
And please, I beg for the opt-in time. Candidates that have not released their manifesto, all Nigerians, their manifesto. As Mr. Peter V released his manifesto, he needs to release one. I think the last one that broke on social media, he said, oh, that was a draft. We are still waiting for the manifesto from Mr. Peter Obi. So that Nigerians can see what he has in the manifesto and interrogate the ideas. All of these things we ask for are just prerequisites. They are not, it's not in any vindictive form. Nobody should see it that way. We are fair to all here. We just want a better country. Our fidelity is to Nigeria.